Hi, I'm Steve Plage, and welcome to this edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Uh, as you know, Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And uh, every, every month we highlight and focus on uh, one of the many nonprofits in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, doing wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, we know that you're sheltering in place as we are, and we hope that you're staying safe. But just because we're sheltering in place doesn't mean that we can't produce uh, quality programming. And we're really delighted. Uh, uh, this edition to have with us uh, Evan Morrison from Housing Matters and uh, all the great work that they do. Evan, welcome. Hi, thank you. Yeah, Evan, of course, is the program manager for the Paul Lee Loft, and I hasten to add the director of the Santa Cruz Free Guide, a wonderful resource for people, for unsheltered people in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County. So, Evan, again, welcome. Great to see you. Um, why don't you give our viewers just a little bit of background about yourself and how you got involved in the, in the homeless services area? Well, I kind of stumbled into homeless services. I, uh, <laughs> I, um, I grew up in Silicon Valley and um, had been laid off in um, 2017. And um, prior to being laid off, had moved to Boulder Creek. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was looking for what was next. And um, <clears throat> this organization, Housing Matters, though at that time it was called Homeless Services Center, was um, was hiring, and I went and interviewed. And honestly, it really it really felt like it could be home for me. Like I really liked the people I was interviewing with. I really liked what everyone was doing. And um, yeah, it just kind of happened into it. You know, mm -hmm. I I was interested in whatever opportunities were available, and that available came knocking, and, or that opportunity came knocking, and um, and I jumped at the chance. And I know you've done a lot of work also with the veterans. Actually, that's uh, that's how we met with your work for local vets. So tell us just a little bit about that. Yeah. So my first job with Housing Matters was as the veterans outreach person. Um, and that encompassed quite a bit of different stuff. I would go to um, I would go to like regular veterans events. Um, you know, at the time there was a you know, veteran service day at the veterans hall in, uh, in downtown Santa Cruz. I got to know, um, as far as I know, all the veteran service providers in the county, mm -hmm. um, and got to know other service providers. You know, um, my, my theory in doing outreach was most veterans will interact with some sort of service provider somewhere in the county at some point if they're homeless. Mm -hmm. So I just made sure everyone knew who I was so that they could call me when they encountered a homeless veteran. Um, and then I literally went into the woods and onto the streets and, um, you know, went face to face and uh, met with people who are homeless, um, mm -hmm. seeing how I could, you know, looking for veterans, but providing anyone with resources. And that's one thing I've always admired, admired about your work is you know, how personalized you've made it and how, how direct your contact is with the homeless folks and, and, uh, and veterans in particular. Uh, we talk about that a little bit when we talk about kind of uh, how the sheltering in place uh, orders and protocols are, are affecting the pursuit of, of that mission. But tell us a little bit about uh, the history of, uh, of, of Housing Matters. Of course, you mentioned that it was known for a long time. As homeless services center, and only recently now has it changed its name and and a little bit of adjusting its mission to housing matters. Yeah, yeah. So, so I started working here at the tail end of 2017. So, for the folks who've kept up, you know, I, I don't know a heck of a lot before then. Um, however, um, the the way I view it is that you know housing housing matters started calling itself housing matters because the focus has been getting people into housing. Um, mm -hmm. there, there seems, you know, there's a shift from, um, from providing services to get people through the day, like um, providing food every day and all that kind of stuff towards really focusing the resources at this organization on getting people housed and um, getting them off the street. Yeah, we've had that conversation uh, over time about uh, uh, emergency services and emergency shelter opportunities and how a lot of the money and, and appropriation programming has now focused more on housing because, you know, it, it doesn't take a genius to understand that, that the creating positive outcomes for homeless folks, a lot of that is involved in finding them housing, transitioning them into that. So uh, I, I know that's uh, been a big focus of, uh, of what's been going 
going on over there. And of course, your executive director over there, Phil Kramer, a good friend of ours and a great community guy, uh, has done a lot of wonderful work over there. And uh, Housing Matters, I'm certain, will be able to pursue that mission as they go forward. One of the things that we've been talking about in these recent programs that we've done here on Nonprofit Spotlight is how the sheltering in place orders and the kind of the social distancing requirements that we're all living under, at least now, um, have uh, affected your ability to pursue your mission, to talk to people, to get, you know, to, to be able to really offer the services that you have done so, so much personalizing with over time. How is that affecting your ability to kind of pursue your overall mission? Um, I would say it hasn't affected our ability to pursue our overall mission. Uh, we've changed kind of lo of the logistics of how we go about that, but I think we're still pursuing that mission just as effectively as we were before. Um, what's changed, so the loft um, prior to this was a dorm. You know, um, it was a couple large rooms with bunk beds in them um, filled with people who were homeless. And then we worked with those folks to get them into housing. Uh, when the shelter at home um, orders came down, and even before then, we realized we needed to do social distancing, um, and we didn't uh, we didn't want to put folks who were already in shelter on the street. Mm -hmm. um, and this was you know this effort was really spearheaded by Phil Kramer, our executive director. Absolutely, um, he um, you know we all worked to we basically filled uh, one of our parking lots with tents mm -hmm. and. Um, went and got volunteers and said, hey, you know, there's, we know that there's some folks who want their own space. We have tents and we were able to fill the tents such that we could, you know, the folks who wanted tents were able to get in tents and then everyone else was able to maintain social distancing in the dorms. Mm -hmm. um, so that was our first step for the loft. And then the second step is we got these pallet sheds, which are uh, pretty cool little structures. Um, they, there's a photo of them in the Sentinel from three or four weeks ago, I think now. Mm -hmm. um, because when, they, when they're shipped out to us, they, um, you know, they're about the size of a pallet and they have a crew that comes out and they set them up and they're approximately eight by eight. They might be seven and a half by eight and a half. And they're little sheds, they have a bed in them. They have, um, they have windows, they have a little bit of power so you can charge your phone. But, um, and, but they have four walls, they have a lock on the door. Mm -hmm. um, they provide, and so we put, one person in each of those, though they can hold a couple. We did have a couple in one at one point. Um, and um, we started moving people into those. Um, and we're looking at uh, expanding that option um, in the future, in the near future. But we started doing that and that has been, you know, the folks who got into the sheds are really happy with those sheds. Uh, but ultimately, so to really answer your question, we didn't have to exit anyone. You know, we've heard, I've heard stories, you know, throughout the country of, of some shelters ha having to send people back out on the street. We didn't have to do that. In fact, um, you know, in the last month, we um, we had more housing placements out of our program than we normally have. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So, and, and it, that could be, you know, uh, a multitude of reasons. Um, we do, you know, we have our staff and we've been able to expand our staff to get people housed. But, you know, there's a lot of speculation that, you know, the rental market's going down or there are more things available. There's a lot. It's hard right now to really parse out why that is. But, yeah, we've been able to ultimately we've been able to get more people housed um, recently. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you and I have talked over time about uh, uh, the various options for people in terms of sheltering and housing, that kind of thing. And there's always been talk about, well, how about tiny homes or how about uh, maybe a tent encampment of some kind and whether or not that could work be logistically and really practically in Santa Cruz. And yet uh, the sheltering in place orders, the social distancing has kind of pushed out the boundaries, I think, of what we what we see and really have appreciated as practical options for folks and I think it's terrific what has happened over at Homeless Services Center Housing Matters where that whole area is now being revisioned as some place that's really habitable for people in various areas. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, for, for me personally, not speaking as, you know, a staff member at Housing Matters, but for me personally, I do believe that the more folks we get in a stable position, the mm -hmm. more folks we can get housed. Um, 
And um, it's, it's exciting. I hope we can um, capitalize, for lack of a better word, on, right. um, on what's going on during coronavirus in getting people into shelter um, and then getting those folks housed. Now, Phil uh, gave us a tour. I'm a member of the Chief's Advisory Committee, and uh, when we were still meeting uh, in person uh, back in March or February, I think he was the chair, took us on, on a tour, very eye-opening tour of, uh, of housing matters, the entire campus. I'd been over there, of course, myself many times, but some of the committee members had not. But what Phil pointed out was that there is this movement toward you know, more uh, residential housing uh, opportunities, and particularly the house that they bought, that you bought, across the street, which at some point is going to be turned into some uh, transitional or permanent supportive housing. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And um, sorry, uh, I'm, yeah, there there are a lot more permanent supportive housing opportunities um, that do seem to be coming up, which is, uh, you know, we're all really excited for. Uh, mm -hmm. There are folks, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, there are just, you know, quite a few folks who are currently homeless in our community who need ongoing support if they're going to be of housed. Course, yeah. and, um, and there are more folks than we currently have that kind of housing for. Um, so we, um, I'm very excited to get more with, you know, what we call in this industry, permanent supportive housing right. constructed in this county. Because as far as I know, there's just no other way to get these folks off the street. No, and I, I think you're right. Uh, for anybody who pays attention to our biannual homeless census and survey and, and sees the number of people who present with either some physical problem or some mental or behavioral challenge, you know, those are the kinds of people who need to, when you put them into transitional permanent supportive housing, need kind of wraparound services. They need that continuing support to help them navigate those systems so they can not just thrive, but they can they survive, they can thrive. And that is the kind of thing that really, I think, uh, is one of the visions that, that Phil is expressing to people through uh, what he's doing there and you're doing at Housing Matters. Yeah, and, and I want to point out a number. I'm, I'm going to pull up. I'm going to see if I can pull up my information. Uh, hopefully you can't see it because um, it is proprietary, but I do want to, um, there's a number I want to share with you because, you know, even though the loft is, you know, every every um, shelter is going to be like a subpopulation of mm -hmm. the homeless community. Yeah. Um, the Pauly Loft currently has about 60% of the folks who are staying in the loft have some sort of identified disability. Mm -hmm. um, and not like, not like a run of the mill disability, but a disability that's going to keep them from being able to afford a unit yeah. on their own. And, um, and that's a reality. I, I just like to remind folks yeah. of that. Like it's, you know, some of the, some of those folks will be able to be independently housed and checked in, on every once in a while and some folks are have more challenges than that right. um and that's you know there are a lot of folks that are dealing with that uh, that kind of scenario yeah. in this uh, yeah. in our homeless community and I think that uh, the the transition really, as you were saying, and I and it was also my observation that for a, a, a long period of time, homeless services center and the work that they were doing was pretty much just a maintenance organization. There wasn't really that permanent tra and, and transitional aspect to it. And I think now that there's a lot more emphasis on that, uh, the number of choose that you. Uh, pointed out to 60%, it really reflects, uh, if you see the homeless census survey, pretty much the entire homeless population in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, which runs to, you know, depending on who you talk to, you know, 2,500 people, 3,000 people, there are an awful lot of people who do need that help, some of whom really can only be helped by programs from the county where they, they provide the health services agency and the mental behavioral health support that we need, but you need to have, you know, landing spaces for them. You need to have some format and some foundation for them to come in and say, hey, you know, we're going to be here and then we're going to try to get some support and services and move through the programs. Yeah, and that's a big part of what we do at The Loft. I mean, a huge portion of our work is simply connecting people to the services that they qualify for. Right. And, ma and making sure that they're consistently connecting with those services. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means we're calling service providers like every week. Sometimes right. that means we're accompanying people to the doctor's office. Right. Like um, there's a there's a lot of the work that we do is just that. And if we right. keep doing that, we get people housed, but it's literally just making sure people are consistently interfacing with the other service providers that they need to be speaking with. 
Yeah. And I, I think that's, uh, again, in my view, the thing that's really needed most in terms of uh, homeless services and support is really those mentors and navigators, those people who can consistently be with somebody or be with a group of people and make sure that they get into the, make sure they make their doctor's appointments or maybe get back into employment market or find out if they're even eligible for benefits. As you know, many uh, unsheltered folks are eligible for benefits and either aren't aware of it or can't navigate the process in order to, to access those those benefits yeah exactly we um, uh, you know that reminds me of a person that is in the shelter now we've been working with him for quite a while to get him in front of the right doctor to get you know the the diagnosis that matches what he says his symptoms are mm -hmm. and then to get you know to get him then the disability that he appears to qualify for, this has been a month long process with this particular right. person. And that's not unusual. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's the thing is navigating the system can take months. And when you're literally sleeping on the street or in a tent out outdoors and you're spending all your day just meeting your very basic needs, you don't have time to do that stuff. Right. And yeah. what, what shelter does is it gives you the time and then the staff at the shelter ideally give you the resources so you can actually get that stuff taken care of. And speaking of resources, it's well to mention that uh, all of this great work isn't done in a vacuum. Uh, uh, housing Matters no. need support not only from the, the city and county, but they also need support from people who want to make donations. So please mention uh, the, where people can make a donation to help, to help out this great work. Yeah, the, uh, go to our website, housingmattersc.org. Uh, the donation page or the do the donation link is right on the front page. Um, you know, and I should point out. Let me see. I have I have the notes right here. Um, I should point out that you know uh, our community has really stepped up. Uh, in quite a big way since um, the shelter at home and since coronavirus hit. Maybe I have it on my phone. Give me just a moment. Um, of course. But we, um, you know, the public has helped quite a bit. We've been able to, you know, uh, provide a lot of services because of the support we've gotten through the community so far. And uh, we're all really thankful for that and uh, are looking forward to continued support. Right. And another aspect of uh, your work in Housing Matters is uh, it has been in the past, and I'm sure it continues to be, uh, volunteer-driven in a lot of ways. Are you still uh, uh, accepting uh, inquiries from people who would like to be volunteers? Are there any volunteers working on campus? Are there any opportunities for people to say, hey, I'd like to help out this great work. How can I do it? Yeah, um, yeah, we are still accepting volunteers. We do have volunteers who are volunteering on campus. Uh, I would say again, the best way to start that process is to go to uh, housingmattersc.org. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a link right on there for volunteering. Um, you know, I my personal preference is to kind of tailor your volunteering to what fits for you and fits your strengths and your schedule and all that stuff. Right. Um, and, uh, and we can do that. You know, we have the bandwidth to do that with you, even during coronavirus. Wonderful. And uh, actually, I may be talking to you myself. I'm looking to <laughs> maybe spend some time out there, a little more time, and get involved in uh, your great work. Uh, as you know, uh, with the coronavirus and uh, the uh, desire for the city and county to have people be safe and socially distant, maybe shelter in place to the extent they can, there have been, of course, uh, the tents uh, encampment that's across from your campus, the tent encampment that's uh, now in San Lorenzo Park. Do you have have any uh, uh, outreach to the folks in San Lorenzo Park? Um, I don't personally, um, uh, because my work because my work is so focused on the shelter that's here. Right. I'm not getting out into the community very much uh, these mm -hmm. days. Uh, that being said, I know I know there are people out there providing services to those mm -hmm. ten encampments. Um, mm -hmm. I know our staff is um, is interacting pretty regularly with the folks uh, across Coral Street from us. Right. And earlier today, I was speaking with an outreach person who was um, who was working with folks in uh, San Lorenzo Park. So I know that there are services being provided out there, but I, I'm not really involved in the in the delivery these days of that stuff. So I don't I don't know the specifics. 
Well, I think it's uh, encouraging to note, uh, as you and I have talked uh, over time, about uh, the number of shelter spaces and hopefully at some point some transitional housing opportunities that really are being generated out of out of the uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic and the sheltering in place and the social distancing. People's focus is a lot more on that, and I think that that's really been a beneficial aspect uh, of what has happened, uh, generally speaking, in our community. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, I'm. I really appreciate the work that we've done in this county around um, making sure that coronavirus hasn't gotten to the homeless population. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've read stories from other parts of the country where it has, and it it's, honestly sounds pretty scary. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, you know, the, the thing that I have to say about that is that I think if coronavirus were to infect, a, you know, a group of people who are homeless, then we could, then it could conceive, you know, in this county, then it could conceivably spread throughout the homeless community in this county. Right. The, the fact that we've, we've been able to keep that from happening um, with all the different services we provided with, uh, you know, providing social distancing with uh, opening uh, the different shelters, emergency shelters throughout the county. I think that's crucial. And I think it's the work like that that's going to keep coronavirus from, uh, you know, really decimating our homeless community. Yeah, and I think you're right. Uh, people would uh, look at that uh, in terms of uh, virus transmission. Uh, it's been uh, very low uh, in the county, and I think that's a testament to our county health services agency and uh, the fact that people who live in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, have taken to heart the sheltering in place and social distancing and all the various protocols. But uh, if you look at the, the homeless community, uh, that transmission has been almost nil. And I think that has to be uh, testimony to the fact that uh, folks like yourself and Housing Matters and the city and county have really mm -hmm. done the best that they possibly could to it, to insulate and protect that community. And it's been a success. It really has. It really has. Yeah. I'm, uh, I've honestly been very impressed by um, our city and county and the efforts that they've made um, to keep our homeless population safe during this time. And, you know, there's, I mean, there's invested, invested interest in that, you know, if it, if the coronavirus, you know, went through our entire, our entire homeless population, uh, that would have a large effect on our community as a whole as well. No, no question about it. Uh, so as we move through uh, kind of uh, the summer and maybe there's some relaxation of the, the sheltering in place uh, order, um, what do you see uh, when you were strategizing with yourself and your staff and Phil? You know, how do you see your mission uh, changing at all? You say it hasn't changed or been impacted that much. Uh, is there some opportunity maybe that you would have in uh, the sheltering place orders being re uh, reduced that you don't have now? Um, I'm not sure that we would change. Um we would change the overall scope of what we we're doing. I mean, not not that we're, so the thing is, is we're not looking that far ahead right mm -hmm. now. Uh, we're kind of, we got into the mode of looking kind of on a day by day basis right. pretty early on in the shelter at home. Um, I, don't, I don't think that that's gonna change until um, we're wide open you know, throughout the county. Um, I think the, the phases, you know, the phases are great, maybe for other folks. I think for here, it, for us providing these services, I think we probably are gonna continue to operate as, you know, essentially the original stay at home yeah. until, um, until we really are sure that, um, that things are safe. Well, I think that's uh, that's a wise uh, course. Uh, as you know, the the needs of the unsheltered community in Santa Cruz are immediate, and uh, and so strategizing for the long term is some uh, sometimes really not very helpful when you have people who really need your help, you know, today and tomorrow, and uh, getting through uh, a period where they can move into some housing, perhaps, and that needs to work now. Yeah. Yeah, and I should say it's not, uh, you know, it's not that Housing Matters has a, speci a specific policy of, okay, here's how we're going to, you know, this is what we're going to do about the shelter at home, you know, in a month or in two weeks mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. It's really just, you know, um, the course of events as I feel them is I, I think we're going to continue the shelter at home until, until the county is really ready to be totally wide open. 
Now, are you still publishing and working with the free guide and getting that information out? And is that yes. also a very, very important aspect of what you do? Yes. Yeah. Um, however, it's it's difficult, especially now that I, I'm not doing outreach every day, now that I'm running a shelter with coronavirus happening, it's difficult to really know what services are available. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done our best. There's there's a page on santacruzfreeguide.org that has the most recent um, services that are available that we're aware of. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, if you're on that website and you know of a service, feel free to click the button to email us because we probably don't know about all the services that are available. Um, and there's all, there is a website or there is a link on there as well that has all the um, like the hygiene stations throughout the city. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that uh, that I feel like is really useful, but it, it's honestly very. I mean, throughout my time working with the homeless in this county, it's been difficult to stay on top of what resources exist and what right. don't. Um, we kind of had to take a um, a policy of we didn't want to list anything that we hadn't gotten our own eyes on, so to speak, right. yeah. and uh, really can't do that now. Um, and. Um, so we're, you know, we're kind of, we're kind of muddling through at this moment with, uh, with the Santa Cruz Free Guide. And, and I think it does reflect kind of what you were mentioning earlier about uh, how uh, everybody in the community, including our city and county, has really stepped up uh, during this particular time of need for all of our residents, but particularly uh, our homeless residents. I know as somebody who works for the Association of Faith Communities, we have our shower trailers that are now servicing uh, San Lorenzo Park, uh, Campment, and some other areas where we're trying to get people those basic services of showers and laundry and the kinds of things that, as you know, uh, unsheltered people need every day. Uh, Evan, we've got a couple more minutes uh, that uh, we should wrap up, but uh, what's something you want to leave us with uh, from your perspective as a homeless service provider and somebody who's doing uh, a lot of great work out of Housing Matters? I mean, honestly, I feel like there's a lot of hope. You know, we've got, uh, we've done a lot in the past six to nine weeks in terms of adjusting to this pandemic and we're still ending homelessness for folks and um i think i think ultimately you know there there's a path forward to really make a big dent in uh, um, the amount of homeless folks that are in this county and i think we may have discovered some of those avenues doing this work of dealing with this pandemic and i think that the big hurdle now is okay we've gotten all these folks in the shelter into you know a relatively safe space how do we transition these folks into housing instead of back on the street once this pandemic is over and that's you know that's a big hurdle to jump um but i say you know let's let's give it a shot let's see if we can figure that out well, we appreciate your message of hope and also your service to the community, particularly the unsheltered community. But that really transcends uh, more than just the unsheltered community. It's a, it's a service to the entire community because as they survive and thrive, uh, so do we all. Evan, thanks so much. A pleasure talking to you. Always great to see you. Yeah, Continue to give work my best to everybody out there at Housing Matters. Uh, this has been Steve Plage uh, for this edition of uh, a nonprofit spotlight to uh, tune in again uh, next time when we again highlight one of the great, great uh, nonprofits in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, doing so much wonderful work like our good friends at Housing Matters. We'll see you later.